Hey everybody, welcome. I'm Tim Brzezinski. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how GeoGebra makes creating a regression, whether it be linear, quadratic, cubic, polynomial, trigonometric, exponential, logarithmic, right? Super easy and intuitive. All right, it's awesome. And I'm also going to throw some ideas for discovery learning in along the way here. I'm going to try to keep the screencast under five to six minutes. So let's get started. We'll share. I'm going to take you to GeoGebra's graphing calculator. Okay, which is uh, right here, we're sharing now. Pretty much right here. You could, you could uh, you know, use it online, offline, if you will. But before we get started, we have to create a data set, right? So oftentimes we talk about uh, some kind of regression. We're in, we're in the first quadrant only, right? So I can enter uh, points like, uh, say, four, five, say, three, five, whatever. Um, but I also, uh, you know, just, just for the heck of it, I'm just going to uh, put a bunch up here, right? Say, A through H. All right, so there's my uh, there's my data set there. Now, the way to do any type of regression in GeoGebra is very very simple. All right, you have a bunch of tools here. We'll go hit the icon that says more, and more will show up. And I love how they're categorized. One of my favorite tools in all of GeoGebra here is the list tool. It's the last one under points. All right, in order this one right here, the green one two and braces. All right, touch it. All right, and we need to use that tool to put all these points in a list. So to do that, just go to the upper corner, the upper, say, left corner of the screen, touch your mouse, and drag a rectangle around it. That's We're lassoing all these points up and let go. It says down here, list L1 created. Okay? And to see that list, we're right over here. Okay? It's pretty much uh, right there. Okay? So now L1 is there, and the points are all on the list. And so now... I can go do, and I did that for a reason. Now, granted, for the best fit line, that's super easy. All right, want the line of best fit? Just click on that. We can lasso everything, and boom, there it is. All right, now, how do I get the equation of that line, Tim? Well, you can do one of two things. You can go back to the calculator and say, oh, there it is right here. All right, now, granted, I think that's rounding to like 13 decimal places, which is ridiculous. So let me go over here to settings. Uh, the gear here, I'll change it to something like maybe three. That's probably a little more uh, nicer and more pleasing to look at. Uh, that's one way. I could also just touch the line and go to the AA, the style bar here pops up. I can go to AA, show the value. The value of a line is its equation. And you know what I love about GeoGebra is that you can drag these points around and you could see the equation of the chain, equation of the line change instantaneously. Okay, that's how fast it is. You know, I have to wait eight seconds to graph the thing again and say, oh, gee, how did it change? Right? It's pretty cool. All right. Now, um, before we do other regression types, I just want to give you guys uh, an idea for a, maybe a five minute class opener. Less than I can think of. But hey, I'd love to be proven wrong. So, right here, let's actually hide the line itself there. We got all the points, right? We got all the points pretty much right there. Okay. So now, why don't we actually go ahead and um, type in correlation coefficient? That's often the concept you study, right? When it comes to uh, um, when it comes to linear regression, say we saw the correlation coefficient. We'll just touch it there. Now we want to put in the list of points. Well, that list of points, GeoGebra called L1. All of these points lie in a list. A list is indicated with that brace right there. So let's type in correlation coefficient L1. Enter. Right. Now, that correlation coefficient is 74 hundredths. So here's an idea for a class opener discovery lesson that you can only do in GeoGebra, as far as I know. All right? I want you to drag these points around. Okay? I tell my students, break them up in the groups. Right? And here you go. You ready? To, and, I, and the goal here is to make that correlation coefficient as high as possible. One, two, three, go. And the students start working. Right? Now, you math teachers know exactly where I'm going with this, right? What's the highest that, that uh, value ever gets? We know is 1, right? And when does it achieve that value? Well, when all the points are collinear. Well, the kids don't know that to start. But see, the problem is that most, most math teachers just tell the students that. But I say don't tell them anything. I say let them play, and you let them discover. And look at there. Voila. That's the highest it ever gets, right? Now, some students will have lines that, you know, in this case, the slope of this line is one half, right? But some kids may have a slope of one. Some kids may have a slope of something higher. But the point is, all the kids are making a general discovery that, wow, you know, that 
when these points are lined up, you get one. But now one student in the corner says, no, 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 Mr. B, I, I got negative one. Well, really? Well, show us your screen. What do you get? And see, now we're creating an environment of rich discussion among the most basic of basic concepts here, right? This for, to us teachers, we know, but it's not as obvious to the students, but they are using this EdTech platform called GeoGebra to make these amazing discoveries that we often, uh, of concepts that unfortunately teachers often just tell students. Again, don't tell them anything. They can tell you, provided you give them the pieces of the puzzle and the time to do so, right? And so then if students didn't discover negative one, I then my next question would tell, be to tell the kids that now I want you to move those points around and play around here, and I want you to make that number as low as possible. And so it goes. Their opportunities for discovery learning are absolutely endless. That's not the only thing you could do. You can actually take pictures from other sources. Let's actually uh, go here for a second to, uh, let's look up Jamie Anderson, snowboard jump from the Olympics. Right, I think there was an article in the New York Times. I think there's Google Images here, right? There it is. So I'm gonna take that Google Image, I'm gonna drag it right out my desktop there. Just gonna put it right there. There it is, that JPEG. Now I'll go back in the calculator, you could drag stuff in. Boom, yeah, it's that easy. Look at that, I could put it right in there and make it a little bit bigger. And now I can go ahead and do another regression type. And which regression type would this be? Yes, you're all shouting quadratic, I could tell, even though I can't hear you, right? So uh, we can do that. And so now we see all that there. Now the points I put, I already put the points in a list already. The list is uh, in, a, in a place called L1. So now what I do is I use the tool called fit. Uh, look at all these fits that appear. It's crazy, right? Look at all these fits, fit implicit, fit growth, fit exponential, fit, right? I'm going to say fit poly. That's one of my favorite tools. Fit poly, everything in L1. And now I type a degree. The degree is two for a quadratic and hit enter and there it is right and check it out i can go ahead and you know change the color there let's make it some kind of yellow so it kind of shows through there right but look at this i could take d i can move it see how that uh see how that curve is changing i make it really whoops not d sorry let me take the curve here make it a little bit thicker and we'll make it so it's easier to see there there's the curve and now i can actually uh, have this thing just start pretty much dancing around here dance away look at that you can see the equation, you can see the changes in real time. You could also do a fit sign. Fit sign is a trigonometric fit, right? Fit sign, L1, there we go. We hide the black and there's the blue, right? And so see it, you can see it right there. And uh, and so and so it uh, it goes there. So yeah, it's, just, it's pretty amazing what you can do here in GeoGebra when it comes to um, analyses of uh, bivariate data, you know, through uh, some kind of regression here whether it be oh yeah ex, uh, exponential fit um fit exp makes uh, an exponential of base e l1 if that's even uh whoops where'd it go maybe hmm. yeah, that there let me delete this actually hang on a second i think i'm uh even up here let me just delete some stuff here just to show you really quickly you got to make this look like it's exponential it probably is undefined but let me just kind of put uh something that looks exponentially uh, tailored here. So if I do fit uh, exp, and I'll just make a list right now. I could have used the list tool, but a, b, c, d, there you go, right? That uses a base of e. Um, if I use fit growth, that makes an exponential fit that whose base is not e, like your typical a, uh, a times b to the x, right? Like uh, such there, a, b, c, and d, right? But those models are definitely equivalent. And, you know, if you take the time to do so, you can prove it. But, um, yeah, so that's how GeoGebra can uh, naturally help you um, engage students pretty much uh, within um, discovery learning and all. So, it is painless. It's so easy to do. So, um, I'm Tim Brzezinski. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, feel free to, to subscribe. Uh, also, uh, coming up February 19th, we're going to do a one-hour GeoGebra augmented reality webinar, how you could use AR within your classrooms to really uh, excite students and engage them in modeling their 3D world mathematically. Thanks for watching.